mold and toxins affect the morphogenetic field. They will change the morphogenetic field of your DNA. So mold is actually not our greatest enemy in terms of microorganisms. It's actually bacteria. Bacteria is much more dangerous to humans. However, mold mycotoxins are the nuclear weapon, so to speak, right? They're very powerful. So what has happened is we have created airtight buildings. And this started in after 70s, 80s, especially the 90s, right? After the energy crisis, and we built energy efficient tight buildings. That's wonderful for keeping our energy costs down. However, there was a hidden cost. When we trapped air inside of our buildings, we didn't understand the consequences of what happened when moisture gets into that envelope. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Seth Jones. He's the CEO of Hygieia Living Corporation, where he and his team developed Super Stratum, the first patent pending process to remove mycotoxins from homes. Now, this is a big deal because you can kill mold, but the mycotoxins, they are released when you go after killing the mold in your homes. I didn't really understand this till recently. And Seth has a product that I'm quite interested in because so many people are suffering from building related illness. Now, here's the thing. We think of building related illness, we think of mold, and I talk all about mold in this podcast, but it can also be a host of other things. Now, here's what's interesting. Building related illness affects folks differently. And more often than not, it's one of those things that affects your mental health. And you can often be gaslighted by the medical community. Your family members can think you're kind of nutty. And as a doc who sees folks with mystery illnesses, building related illness is so important to have on your radar. Now, Seth reports that over 66 million homes in the U.S. have toxic conditions that create building related illness. Now, that means approximately 170 million folks. That's a lot of people that are dealing with this. Why is this happening? Because of the energy efficiency that has been pushed on us in terms of how we, we should be working with our homes, right? The building of our homes, the construction. This is something that really needs to be addressed because I'm seeing folks that are quite sick and after the pandemic, things blew up because people were in their homes more. And now we have more people working from home. And now we have people that are sicker than ever. Could it be building related illness? It is possible. Seth was an international known DJ and songwriter until he, his partner, and other folks that lived in their home started to get sick. He himself felt the effects of building related illness. And this is why he dedicated his life to helping folks. So before I give away all the juicy details of this podcast, I just want to say that if you're suffering with a mystery illness, no one can figure out what's wrong with you. Maybe you have a autoimmune condition. Maybe your mood just, you can't seem to get your mood right. Your energy is low and nothing seems to be working. Maybe docs are trying to balance your hormones and it's not working. You want to assess your home. It is so important to know what's going on. So let's introduce you to Seth Jones so that you can learn a little more about building related illness and if there could be something lurking in your own home. All right, let's get on with the podcast. Seth Jones, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. I'm happy to be here. Man, we already talked about a lot of things because, guys, I had a lot of questions for him because, of course, building-related illness is something I deal with in my office on a daily basis. And so this is a great podcast for me to help keep put the word out about what is going down in your homes and even your office environments. And probably we're even going to talk about cars, too, at some point here, I'm guessing. Just all the environments. All the environments. So, so Seth, tell us a little bit about your exposure to mold and how this all kind of came to fruition for you? It's a wild story. Um, you know, a lot of people ask how I got into this and they probably expect some strange story, but they really don't expect me to say that I was a DJ. Um, I had been, I don't know, 
you can see behind me here, I was in music for many years um, and wound up in Los Angeles doing that and was kind of touring internationally and just doing my thing and um, began to kind of get a little entrepreneurial bug. And I met um, my business partner and I met a guy who had this interesting chemical formula and I didn't know anything about mold, but um, that, that chemical is now our endurance coating. Um, it's a, it's kind of our flagship product. It, it's a long-term uh, mold resistant coating. So it can last for 20 plus years inside of a home. It's very water resistant and visible. So we found this technology and I said, I'm having fun doing music, but this sounds exciting. And I, came from Louisiana. I grew up in Louisiana. So I knew, you know, like we talked about Washington, I'd seen mold. I said, well, you know, if this thing can solve the mold problem, then, you know, maybe there's a, there's an opportunity here. So that started the company was this product. And the, you know, the impetus behind that was we had some friends who had gotten really sick from mold and, you know, they, for years, they had been going to different doctors and we heard this term Sears. So, we knew that there was a health issue, you know, that was going on. But at that point, and this was about four years ago, um, there, there, there wasn't a lot known kind of about the problem that we were trying to solve. You know, we knew that mold was an issue, but we kept hearing this term mycotoxins. Mm -hmm. And as we got into the mold remediation space, we realized that, oh, no one knows about mycotoxins. Um, and the reason no one knows about mycotoxins is because they were really only studied in the context of food. You know, that as mold grows in food, it releases these toxins. And um, some estimates say that a quarter of the world's foodstuffs are infected with these poisonous chemicals that mold creates as a defense mechanism. Um, but we don't deal with them that much here in the developed world. Um, so, you know, if you looked on the research of these toxins, you there's all sorts of research on the can you know how they cause cancer and autoimmune diseases and all these different things because we've understood them in terms of ingestion. Well, through the process of this company, we realized that we think these things are in the air, and there was no at that time um, there were really no testing methods that could sample for them in the air, and there was really a consensus within the mold remediation industry that they didn't exist and they weren't a problem. Um, but because we came from the health side, all the doctors that we talked to who understood mold, they knew, you know, they told us that everybody has mold and mycotoxins. And so we put kind of put two and two together. So, you know, I'm living in Los Angeles at the time. We're in startup mode and building this company. What I didn't understand um, was, you know, like I talked about in LA, it rains Every January, everything leaks, the landlords paint over everything, and then they deal with it the next year. And that had happened in my house. And um, it, was a, it was a big house, kind of startup culture. So there was like a front house and a back house, and different people kind of came in and out. And everyone who lived in that house uh, wound up extremely sick, some of them with substance abuse you know, issues. Um, depression, a lot of like serious issues, very serious issues developed as we were building the company, discovering this problem. And I was in that house. I went through a very difficult relationship. My partner had probably one of the worst cases of building related illness that, you know, I had seen. I had no idea at the time what was happening. You know, no, none. We hadn't gotten to that part in our research yet. <laughs> Um, but it really created this story for me that by the time we had kind of figured out what was happening, we developed superstratum, which is a solution not for the mold, but for the toxins left behind by the mold, the mycotoxins that are really driving the, the chronic disease. I woke up one day and I said, oh, I think I've got this problem too. <laughs> I think that the ADHD and the anxiety and these things that I had been dealing with and kind of pursuing more of a traditional Western solution for might be the result of the very thing that I'm telling everyone else, <laughs> you know, is there. And so that was, you know, a, a, an interesting realization for me. Um, and it really, you know, I was passionate about this before, but kind of when I, when I looked in the mirror and I go, oh, you know, I'm sick too. It really helped frame for me this problem, not just the, oh, that we're sick, but how do we even know that we're sick? How do we think about our illnesses? How do we think like, what is health? How, 
you know, it, it brought up all this, all of these other questions. Um, and that's what, you know, our company is passionate about. That's this, that's what we're trying to solve. Um, and that's really about, you know, the education and the tools, what we've built and developed over these years, you know, we want to offer them um, to people because sometimes like in, in even the case that I was in, just a little bit of information could have drastically changed the trajectory of of a lot of people's you know health um, that some are still recovering from. So that's really what we want to do, and it's a little bit kind of how I I meandered from music into building the building space. Hey, you know, I as soon as you said DJ, I was like, well, that you travel a lot, you're exposed to different buildings too. I mean, some of my sickest people are flight attendants. And I think because of exposure to a lot of hotels, different environments, planes, who knows, yep. you know, and, and it just made me think like, hmm, hmm, was this the background? But one thing you brought up, though, is the doc saying, you know, everyone has mycotoxins. And and so a lot of this gets blown off in, in conventional medicine spaces. But at the same time, the symptoms are so varied and lots of mental health stuff in terms of what I've seen as well, that ultimately it can be passed off as other things. It can be, you know, almost like an invisible illness situation too, where folks are just, I don't know what I want to say, I guess gaslight is probably a really great term in this case. That is the exact term. Um, and it's not intentional. Sometimes it's negligent. Um, but really the, the issue is, 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 the reason that it creates so much mystery illness is is because of the way that toxicity works. Toxicity starts in the environment. That toxin, you know, if there is a cell, an organ, an organism that's in that environment, then that organism or that cell becomes deficient in something because the toxin is taking something that the cell needs. That deficiency then creates in the cell an adaptation because the cell is trying to survive. So it adapts and changes its behavior to survive in a deficient environment. If it can't survive or can't get, it can't remove the toxin or, or leave the environment, then it passes on the adaptation as a mutation. And the mutation creates the symptom. Now that chain can go a million different ways depending on individual biology, right? What toxins and things are in that environment. And most importantly, genetic predisposition. MTHFR mutations, right? So what we see oftentimes, and this is really what creates, I would say the most confusion and suffering. And this was a true in my story because my partner was very sick, very, very sick. I was not very, very sick. I was dealing with some things that it actually took me a few years even to realize that, oh, these patterns that have developed in my thinking were a result of toxicity, but she was extremely sick. I couldn't understand. I would have never in a million years thought it was the building because I was fine. And that happens all the time. And it it, it, it disproportionately affects women, actually, um, because there are those toxins affect hormones in different ways for women. And women spend more time in the building. Women typically don't have the loudest voice in the relationship. So a lot of times we meet women all the time who had they knew what was going on. They had an intuition, but they were gaslit, right? They were told, no, from the doctor, oh, you're fine to take these SSRIs, take these antidepressants, right? Oh, from the husband in many cases, this building's fine, I'm fine, right? But what a lot of people don't realize is these symptoms can emerge vastly differently, right? So what might happen in a man is he may gain weight, or he may not be able to sleep at night, or he may just wake up with a stuffy nose in the morning. The woman might experience psychosis, depression, anxiety, autoimmune disease. I mean, there are a, a psoriasis, skin issues, right? Liver issues. Like you said, how mold affects, mold and mycotoxins affect all of what the, what the in Eastern medicine, they call the koshas, right? Our energy sheaths. The physical body is just the densest sheath. That's where the symptoms emerge. But we have a subtle energy body that's our thinking and emotions, and even into the what they call our astral bodies. Mm -hmm. These sicknesses affect those as well. So the experience oftentimes of mold sickness or toxicity can be spiritual, right? Or it can be your liver, or it can be both, right? Because there's a connection between emotion and organs and communication. So 
when people get th this is a particularly difficult type of illness to get because it's not like oh i got a virus from you know a child got a virus at school and he, the body needs to recover from the virus there's an assault there's a there's a toxin in the body and and by the time that people get very sick there's usually a soup right because the toxicity has raised the ph in the body which meant the parasites and all the gut issues come so now you have an ecosystem right of things taking energy from your body and that's very difficult to to get out of the body but you also have a lot of cellular issues after that and so just healing the physical body is difficult but then when you get into all the interpersonal interrelational issues that go into the sickness when you get into the mental health these mycotoxins cross the blood brain barrier right they inflame you know, it, it's the same neuronal inflammation that tbi and trauma is so the experience of a toxic building is your childhood trauma mm -hmm. right because the toxins are in your brain attacking those weak places those inflamed places in the brain and if you if your glymphatic system and your lymphatic system can't get those toxins out of your body then you have this base level of toxicity so that when you travel and you hit that moldy hotel room it hits you immediately immediately and what happens to a lot of people even when they start doing detox programs and trying to pull these toxins out is they can get their toxicity down enough but they're so sensitive that any change in their environment will wreck their immune system or you know will cause an inflammation reaction so when they travel it makes it very very difficult and they feel like they roll all the way back down the hill and and i see you know i've seen people spend years in those cycles of going up and down and up and down and you know what i would we what would i always say to people is that if you think of in those terms this is the most important thing this is what you have to address first everything is coming from the environment mm -hmm. as above so below as within so without mm -hmm. right everything is is it's it's why in all of the religions there were these purity codes and ritual cleanings right it wasn't just for fun it was because that they understood that when we don't take care of our environment right then we can't keep these things out these other things that come into our lives and affect us are, are affect our thoughts and our minds which is actually what parasites do right they affect our thought so there's something spiritual about this process it's it's much more than just cleaning your home it's actually understanding our relationship to our environment and you know doing the the work of repentance so to speak to fix all of those problems right to get into right relationship with our environment but then it's also changing the way that we live going forward and I've worked with enough people who've had building related illness to see the patterns that emerge in the way that they live, the way that families live. And that's the hardest thing, right? Because we can fix a building. You know, it, it maybe costs a little bit of money, it might, but the technology is there. We can do it. But there is this other aspect to these other bodies, our mental body, our emotional body, our astral body. You know, and and that is also what I'm very passionate about, what our company's passionate about. It's this kind of healing from from the top down. I'm glad you mentioned that because I do see that as well. There's definitely you can fix the building, you can have someone move from one apartment to the next, fog them, clean them, you know, address the mold. And we're going to talk about addressing the mycotoxins in a second because that is different, and yep. that's something that I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand. So we'll talk about that because a lot of folks I've worked with have something. Like, yeah, I cleaned up the mold. We cleaned up the mold in the area. Everything's good. We'll get to that. But it's the the thing you're addressing is the energetic impact that these things have. They hijack your body. Yeah. And, and, and basically, like I've explained to a lot of my patients who were kind of there on the quantum medicine, but not quite there. Um, I think there still needs to be some education. And the idea is that it changes your energy. And, and, and the balance is, is what's key. Yeah. I'm guessing you've seen this over and over again. Over, over and over. You know, it, it really took understanding the different bodies that we have, right? That everything is energy. Even our physical body is energy. If you zoom as far down as you can, right? What is it? It's just vibrating light, right? Everything is light at a different density of energy. So our physical body is energy, but so is our emotional body. So is our mental body. 
you know, so is the our spiritual body, so to speak. And this is throughout, you know, especially the the Vedic traditions in Hinduism, they talk about, they call them koshas. These are our energy bodies. And you're exactly right. You know, um, emotional trauma affects our emotional body, right? That is information. If you have the same way, it, it affects, let's say this is an emotional toxin. It's an abusive mother, right? Well, the child is deficient in the love that it needs. So it adapts its behavior. It creates a personality. In extreme cases, it actually splits, right? The psyche will split. So it creates an adaptation. And then what happens if that child doesn't heal? Then when that child has a child, their child carries the memory of that trauma. That is in the morphogenetic field, right? That's in the energy field that creates the DNA. Mold and toxins affect the morphogenetic field. They will change the morphogenetic field of your DNA. It's You can think about it simply like your liver is constantly reproducing cells, right? It's regenerated something like every eight weeks or something like that, crazy. Why do we have these chronic issues in our liver. Even when we get the mold and toxins out, you know, and I'm sure you see this all the time, it's so difficult for people to get that final 20%, even after they've detoxed, right? Their body still has the memories and they, the antigen, it's like there's something there that spooks them anytime that they get near it again. That's in the field, right? That's more difficult to fix. It's cellular health, but it's morphogenetic work. And you you can do that work in a variety of ways, but one of the the most effective ways to do that is through energy medicine. Um, you know, medicine that's not dealing with chemicals, right? Because that's that's kind of the the, the lowest the lowest stage, the, the densest stage of energy. But these systems of energy, the the quantum biology, right? The energy systems of the meridians that are running through the body, because that's where a lot of these issues happen when you get into building related illness and toxins. And we even have in our questionnaire, you know, I ask customers like, do you have dreams about demons or ghosts or things trying to kill you? Often that is a symptom in, in the, in the astral body of toxins. And I've, I've one customer in particular, it was a couple and she, it was a similar situation. He wasn't as sick. She was very sick she had this intuition and then in her dreams it the spirit was coming to her and she just felt like it was trying to kill her and i had been talking about this and so she came to me and she said i think that there may be mold in the house and it was a big multi-million dollar home beautiful home and uh sure enough we went there we ripped the whole house up like it it, it had spread through the walls the hvac system and you know when they really went and took a look they actually were both very sick he they just didn't really understand it. So yeah, there, there are definitely levels to, uh, yeah, to this type of sickness. It's, it's not simple. Wow. Yeah. The extreme is the cases where there's, there's mold throughout the entire house. And, and it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, I see that all the time too, like one, one of the partners may be more sick than the mm -hmm. other. And, and one of the interesting cases that I've seen too, and, and this may be something you can speak to because I definitely want to talk about how the mycotoxins are more of the issue. Folks will tell me like, yeah, we had mold when we bought the house. You know, it was disclosed. We cleaned it up. It was remediated, but I haven't felt good since yep. I've been in the house. Let's talk about that mycotoxin yeah. situation. This is, uh, this is the key, right? And when we started our company, we didn't understand that. We said, okay, well, mold's the problem, and mold is a problem. You can develop allergies. It can call it, can get in your body and grow in your body, right? That happens. But mold is a living organism, and like most living organisms, it needs to defend itself. So as a defense mechanism, it creates a poison. And that poison um, is, is, they're called mycotoxins, and there are a variety of types of mycotoxins. Mold's main enemy is actually bacteria. Right, And so mold makes mycotoxins primarily to kill bacteria. And we actually use one uh, revolutionary mycotoxin to kill bacteria called penicillin, right? It comes from a fungus. It's a mycotoxin that we use to kill bacteria in our body. So mold is actually not our greatest enemy in terms of microorganisms, it's actually bacteria. Bacteria is much more dangerous to humans. However, mold mycotoxins 
are the nuclear weapon, so to speak, right? They're very powerful. So what has happened is we have created airtight buildings, and this started in the 70s, 80s, especially the 90s, right? After the energy crisis, and we built energy efficient tight buildings. That's wonderful for keeping our energy costs down. However, there was a hidden cost. When we trapped air inside of our buildings, we didn't understand the consequences of what happened when moisture gets into that envelope, because now it can't evaporate out of that building. It stays. And what do you think happens when you see these homes being built and wrapped in plastic and you see the rain and then they just close them up? That moisture is already trapped in the building. And those trusses and were laying on that dirt and they got rained on and there's mold growing on them before the home's even built. And if you go talk to new builders these days, they're they have mold remediators on speed dial because they have to remediate the homes before they're even finished building. Now, that's a problem, right? But most builders and homeowners think of it as an expense problem. Oh, well, we got to get the mold cleaned. What they don't consider is that that mold has been releasing a poisonous chemical. And what also do you think happens when you go and try and clean that mold or kill it or you spray it with a chemical? It releases. It's going to fight back. It releases the toxin. So what's actually happened in, in many cases with mold remediation is that someone finds mold. They may say, oh, I'm sick and it's I'm sick from the mold. The mold remediator comes in and he does a good job. He removes the mold. However, that mold has spread toxins throughout the HVAC system because they've gotten through the spores and the dust that are in the whole home. That person is acutely sensitive because their toxicity is built up. So they're like a, it's like a dog's nose, how they can tell that if a toxin, their body will just go into inflammation. The mold remediator leaves, doesn't get the toxins, and in some cases made the building more toxic. So the individual comes back in and they're anxious. They feel, they, they, they're chronically fatigued. They have chronic pain. They have insomnia. Their psoriasis pops up, right? Like name their autoimmune, their POTS, their, uh, right? It's all there. And there's no way they would ever know that the building's making them sick because they got the mold remediated. And the mold remediator doesn't test for the toxins and there's no real test to te for the toxins. And the chemicals that you use, the way you clean your house doesn't get rid of those tough chemicals that stay in the home. They'll stay. There are studies that show they stay for years after the mold is gone. So this problem can persist for years. I mean, you can sell the home. And I have seen uh, some of the saddest cases that I've seen are of people who have re-entered the home after this has happened. I've seen people kill themselves. I've seen people like die within months because they were immunocompromised. I've seen people develop addictions and have stroke. It It's this slow grinding sickness that just overtakes a person. And, and you would never, ever, ever know that that was the root cause because doctors can't, they don't test for these toxins. They don't show up in regular blood work. Neurologists, I watch people go, to, neurology is actually one of the worst places you get gaslit because you come in with these neurological symptoms. I, I remember sitting there with a poor customer, got in their HVAC system, spread, they were having seizures, terrible seizures. She had a seizure at the coffee shop we were meeting in to talk about it. And she had been to all of the specialists at a very large hospital who basically was like, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, it's, it's, that's what makes the sickness so difficult. And mycotoxins, the, 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 the real problem is because according to the government, those conditions, those water damage conditions are present in over half of the buildings. And they say mold is in up to 70%. So when you're looking at that, you've got 50 to 70% of all of the buildings, homes and offices in the United States that have mycotoxins. Then some estimates, if you know, you Google these kinds of genetic conditions, say that 40% of the population has uh, is predisposed to these toxins, meaning they can't get them out of their body. They can't methylate, right? Right. MTHFR, this, this is becoming very popular. People are starting to realize this, right? Because there are a lot of other toxins that we can't methylate too. So 40% of the population have one a genetic condition. That's 60, 70, 80, 100 million people who are living in mycotoxin environments who are experiencing an allergy, a food allergy, a chronic illness, skin issue, an autoimmune disease, mystery, you know, mental health. 
and they don't understand that it's toxicity in the building. So they go to the doctor, right? They get on immunosuppressants, they get on uh, SSRIs, antidepressants. Those are the chronic pills that most people take because they don't know what's happening. They're depressed. They feel crazy because they are going crazy because their brain is poisoned. The doctor just sees the symptom, right? The psychiatrist just sees the symptom and gives them the pill. And then you get all the interactions. And when, when you get on that hamster wheel that's rolling downhill, it's very, very difficult. But to go back to your question, you know, the mycotoxin, it's mold remediation. There's a, that's a whole conversation, right? And you have to do that. You have to get the mold out of the building. You can't just spray the mold and leave it because it, even when it's dead, because you've got toxins and spores and all that. So you want mo good mold remediation that understands what the cause of the mold was, fix the water issue first, fix the building, remove the mold, tear it out. Once that's done, now you need to clean the building envelope of mycotoxins. And Superstratum, our technology, this was our um, solution for this. So this is the first solution actually to clean mycotoxins from a building. And it's a three phase system. It, it uses three unique chemistries. Um, the first chemistry, this product is called our building cleaner. So it's a uh, hypochlorous acid. When you hear acid, it's like, oh, it must mm -hmm. be dangerous. I um, brush my teeth with it every morning. I spray it up my nose. I nebulize it. I put it on my skin. It's made inside of your own body. Your white blood cells actually generate hypochlorous acid. So it's extremely safe. And when it breaks down, all you're left with is salt. So we um, we created a product from a very specific type. Uh, uh, there's a specific type of manufacturing that we use to create this molecule. And you said you saw our white paper. So this was the first white paper that was released that we did to show that this chem that we can destroy the actual chemical. Um, and, and we were very successful. So we've got a very, very safe uh, product um, that has an incredible efficacy to destroy these toxins. So the first phase of the whole home, the superstratum whole home system, is to fog hypochlorous acid into the building. And that knocks things down out of the air, all the particulates. It destroys toxins on surfaces. And then we do a, you do a wipe down. So you wipe all the surfaces with that chemical. The second phase is a gas phase. Uh, we have a product called uh, Superstratum Deodor Bombs. And the deodor bombs, we'll talk about the cars. This is a little, a little dry sponge and you put them in all the rooms of the home. Uh, you fill up with water and then you leave the house for 12 hours and it fills that whole home up with chlorine dioxide gas. Now, chlorine dioxide, um, it's the most powerful oxidation chemical that we have. It was the chemical is actually used during the anthrax. They they brought it in. It's it's used in antimicrobial agents and things. The problem with using it commercially was it was very expensive and very difficult to generate as a gas. Mm. Uh, so our technology and product, it's like bite sized pieces of it, right? You can put them in each room and it makes just the right amount of gas. And what that gas does is it penetrates all the places that you can't see right? Behind the walls, into the clothes, into all the soft goods, the things that accumulate these toxins. And as you know, people just throw these things away because they're you can't get them out. These toxins are sticky. They don't, they stay. You can wash over and over and over. And some people just can't even put their clothes back on. So this gas will penetrate behind the walls and break down toxins and odors and those types of things. And then the third phase is once you let the building air out from that gas, um, uh, the first product that I talked about, how we found and started the company, this is our endurance coating. Um, and this is a, an invisible water resistant, extremely water resistant um, and abrasion resistant coating that you can put inside and outside. Um, and this was the technology. When we found this, we said, oh, this is uh, the secret sauce. There was no technology. There was no cleaner or coating that could prevent mold if it got wet right? Everything just washes away. You can kill mold, but it washes away if you get moisture. Well, what makes mold grow? Moisture. That's why we have mold problems, right? Because we can't prevent mold from growing. This invisible coating um, can resist mold. So it has preservatives in it. You can't see them, but it's it, they're encapsulated there. And when um, mold spores land, it can't grow on the surface of that coating. So you can put that on your sidewalk out front where algae grows on the side of your home. You can put it on your clothing. You can also put it inside the cavity of a wall in your HVAC system. 
And outside, like on your sidewalk, it'll last for two years. Right? You won't have anything to grow for a couple of years. Inside the home, you know, it is essentially, it, it can last for 25 years. When our Hygieia service division, when we do that professionally, we warranty that for 15 years. Um, so it's that peace of mind that to know that even if you get condensation again, if you have a flood in the house, right, you're not going to have mold growing um, because you've got this water resistant protection going forward. So that whole home, that super stratum whole home system, that is the solution that we developed. And rather than we worked with a lot of professionals and, and you know, the industry, but what we decided was we need to take this straight to the customer. Right. And, and as you know, right, we, when you when you can put something in someone's hands and they can actually get that done themselves, I mean, people are they need those solutions. So we developed a consumer product and we sell direct to the customer and they can get on our website. They can enter in their home. You know, it creates a custom um, a custom order for them and it ships to their door. It's got their instructions and they can run the system on their home. So um, it's a great solution for people who are dealing with BRI, who've just had mold remediation done. Um, and it's frankly, it's just a great cleaning system. You know, getting back to this lifestyle, it's something that I do in my house. When I fog, I've got a fogger. When I fog hypochlorous acid, the air clears. I mean, I can immediately you know, tell a difference. Um, so it's about that lifestyle. And this is their tools and a solution that allows people to detoxify their home and then gives them these ways to maintain that environment going forward. Wow. That's incredible because I think a lot of people, let's put it this way, like one, moving's not an option for a lot of people. You know, they've just dropped a bunch of money on a home and, you know, also thinking about the homes that are wrapped. That's something I discovered when I bought my home here in Wisconsin, completely wrapped. I panicked. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, what do we do? But knowing that the gas can get through the walls, right? So through the drywall into, so I'm not having to, because at, at one point we were talking about basically trying to figure out how to take the plastic off the home or how to vent. And yeah. it seems like that would be build a new house at this point. Um, so yeah, yeah, you know, and we, we people we, we're starting to get scared these days now with these airtight buildings and everyone's kind of realizing, wait a minute, <laughs> like we're living inside Ziploc bags, you know, mm -hmm. and that's true. But at the same time, when you have when you understand the components that go into this and you can create a healthy environment in an enclosed space. Right. And one of the ways to do that, obviously, is you need to make sure there's no mold growing. You need to get the toxins out. But going forward, air quality and air purification, you know, is a, is a big part of that. And um, there's another technology that that personally I really, really like called multi-cluster ionization. And this is not this is not commonly found in most air purifiers and ionizers, the big ones on the market. There's um, two types of air purification, right? There's active and passive. Passive is when you're drawing things into a filter. So an air filter, you suck all the energy in. But if you've ever seen a pool, right? You know, that leaf that just spins in the corner of the pool, mm -hmm. your air is the same way. So there's some air, you're not getting all of the air to that filter. So that's the, the first flaw with passive. But the second is filters, you know, the best HEPA filters can, can collect down to about 0.3 microns. So you can catch a mold spore and those types of things, but it's too small for mycotoxin. Mycotoxins are, uh, you know, 0.1 nano or 0.10, 0 0.01 nanometers. So they go straight through. And oftentimes what happens, sometimes what happens is you get particle bounce. So the dust or the spore comes through, hits the filter and the mycotoxin goes out the back. So that is one issue is that, you know, it's important for people to understand that filters are great, right? You want to purify your air, but they won't get you all the way there, especially if you're dealing with toxins. So that's passive, right? Bringing air to the filter. Active is when you send things out into the environment to purify. That is ionization. Now, the ionization that you find on the market today is what's called bipolar. So it's basically creating a single ion you know, and shooting it out. I, I say it's like a water balloon, right? It can travel in a straight line, not very far, and then it pops. Ionization in nature is generated through lightning strikes and, you know, the electromagnetic currents in the air. It takes a lot of energy to create powerful ions. 
multi-cluster ionization actually creates a much, much more powerful ion that is a cluster because it's clustered together. These have 10 times the, the, the amount of bipolar ionization. They can spread the, you know, the coverage area is much, much larger because those single ions can't travel very far. Um, and bipolar ionization is great because it does a few things, right? It goes out, it's ionizing microbes and different things. So it's, it's doing that, but it's also changing the charge of the dust particles in the air. So they fall to the floor and that assists with cleaning. So I, um, like I said, there's a couple devices out there. There, I think there's a device, there's a device called a chaos, um, which is, which has a filter, like a HEPA filter in it. So it's doing a filter, but it's also got the multi-cluster ionization. Um, and I can probably link to that. I'll, I can send you a link to that as well. But that's one of the things that when our customers go and get a device like that and put it in their environment, it's one of those, it's like a bubble that they can kind of carry around them. It helps them manage the environment if they travel. It gives them that kind of uh, long-term you know, solution of maintaining that environment. And oftentimes we hear almost immediately, like the next day, I woke up for the first time without a stuffy nose or what, because that air is getting cleared out because those particulates are, are just in the air. So when you start to combine, you know, these solutions together, you can really change your health because you fix that environment, you purify that air, and now your nervous system finally can relax, right? Your immune system can finally has some energy, you know, fight. You have the peace of mind of knowing that your, you know, Billy's not there. So um, there's a, you know, a few different things that we like to help people understand that they can do depending on their price point, depending on what issues they have, you know, going on in their home. But, you know, I, our, our super stratum system is a very powerful tool that's much more affordable, you know, than a lot of the professional services that are out there. Um, and, and then the air purification, you know, those two things, um, whether, you know, if you're, if you own your home, right. And you're trying to treat your whole building, that's, but also, renting right and i know that you experience this a lot just people can't move right or and and they don't even have control over that environment they can't get there there's no laws right there's no liability so they can't get their landlord to pay for it you know so we like to help people come up with solutions like what's the next best thing that you can do you know how can you get a little bit of traction you know so that you can get a little bit better um, because it's not binary too. And, and that's ultimately the point I, I wanted to make is that, yeah, we seal our homes in, but it's about education and learning and information and then pairing the right solutions with that education so that you can create a healthy living environment for, for your family. Absolutely. Yeah. We, ha we have to think about all the inputs going on there because there are <laughs> varied <laughs> situations based on homes, apartments, Someone was on a boat, you know, there's all, yeah. there's all the environments there. Now it sounds like, so you said you guys do consults and it sounds like you have the ability to kind of find out what kind of living space and treatments are based on size, I'm guessing of space mm -hmm. and different intricacies. Yep. There. Cubic volume of the rooms, you know, sometimes how much gas you need, the size, um, a lot of, so our coding is a great solution for crawl spaces and attics. Um, and you get, you know, different parts of the country, you get different problems in buildings that develop mold. So mm -hmm. in the South, right, you get a lot of condensations and HVAC lines, um, those types of things up in the North, you get a lot of attic rain because of the, the winter. So, um, depending on if someone wants to coat their attic or coat their crawl space or what needs to be done, you know, we can adjust it. But like I said, on our website, um, if you go to the website, there's a chat bot and you can just go right there. It sends you to some software. You know, and it it probably take you half an hour if you got a tape measure, but you can walk around your home and just enter in the dimensions of all the rooms, and then it'll create a custom you know uh, quote and a custom order of all the products. Tell you you know where they go and how to use them. Um, so it it really does depend kind of on the size of the home or the building or what you're doing. Um, but there's also you know you brought up cars. I love that you brought up cars because a lot of people don't realize how much exposure they're getting in their vehicles. Mm -hmm. And our, um, our deodor bomb is a great solution for that. You can basically overnight, just put one in the car, close it up, you know, and come back in the morning and open it up and, and air it out. And it, it's smells like you got a new car. Um, so yeah, it's just being aware of these things, understanding what those tools are and then getting in that lifestyle, you know, so that you, you maintain that environment. 
Makes sense. Makes sense. Now you said smells like a new car, but I know a lot of people are going to be like, does it emit a new car smell? Or not, not your the car new car smells smell. because it gets rid of the smells. It feels fresh, right? Now the the smell that you'll notice, it kind of is like um so like I said, the gas is chlorine dioxide. So there's a little bit of like a chlorine. It smells like it's been cleaned basically. Um, and that dissipates, you know, over time as it, as it breaks down or a, as you air it out. Um, but that's the gas, you know, that gets in and breaks everything down. Okay. So you could do that a couple of times a year, I'm guessing. And then in terms of like houses, just, just like house maintenance, it sounded like you said the, the, the sealant, I'm just going to say it. Wrong. The coating, yeah. Yes, the coating is like going to last 15 years in terms of your your guarantee, but it could last longer. So that sounds like you do that once in every 15-ish years. Yeah, you, you okay. wouldn't, you know, like let's say if you had mold remediation done and they ripped out, you know, the wall and they've gotten all the mold out. Um, a lot of the way that mold remediators use that product is then they will spray the joist and the drywall so that that, you know, so that protection, that protected coating is there you would never, you'd never open that wall up again, right? You'd never right. do that again. It would last for, for as long as you were in the house, right? And so let's say it did, it leaked again or the house flooded. Well, you wouldn't have any mold to grow, even if it was 10 years later, right? Nothing would grow in that cavity. So the coating in an undisturbed location like that, you're, it's, it's a, it's a long-term solution. Now, like I said, if you're using it like on your outdoor patio furniture, you know, right. it, that, which is a great place to use it where I, I use it, It'll last for a couple of years. So every every year or so, you know, you there may be dirt that you'll clean off, but there won't be any growth. So you can just kind of spray, re-up that coating every year or two. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people use that product in their shower. Uh, I, you know, use it in the shower too. It'll last for about 10, 12 weeks in the shower. So that just becomes a part of your cleaning cycle. You know, you can kind of spray your shower. Um, what we what we really like to encourage people to do is our building cleaner, the hypochlorous acid. That's a Swiss army knife of a, of a cleaner. I use that often. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's a fascinating um, chemical that's being used in like a lot of medical fields. It uh, mouthwashes and, and um, I tell, I tell the ladies this, now they're selling hypochlorous acid in these little four ounce bottles for forty dollars. <laughs> it's an it's an incredible antibacterial spray. You know that's how they use it, um, but it's this all the same chemical, right? Mm -hmm. So you know it's a great chemical just to use around the house. I wash my vegetables with it. I get them back from the store and I spray them down. Um, so that's a good one that you know that you can use. And people, that's probably our most popular product. We have uh, two versions of of that chemical. One is our building cleaner. That's a 500 part per million, very high concentrated. And that's what we use for the, for the detoxification. And then we have our everyday cleaner, which is a 300 part per million solution. Um, and that's what I've got bottles all over the house. And, you know, I kind of, kind of use it for everything. Gotcha. Okay. So how often would you recommend doing a home detox clean, like cleaning with the solution? How, how I, the, the whole home system, you know, I would, you, you really only need to do it once. Right. When you have, uh, if you have a mold issue and your house has gotten toxic, you want to remove that mold, fix the water, remove the mold, and then run the whole home system to get the mycotoxins out. Once you've done that, as long as you don't have any mold that starts growing again in that environment, the toxins aren't going to return, right? Because you've gotten rid of them. And hopefully you maintain that environment so that there's no mold growing. So it's it's really a, a one-time expense in terms of if, if you don't have these reoccurring issues, then hopefully you never have to do it again. And then you do the the basic cleaning, the air purification, you know, the things to to keep those mold spores and those toxins from growing and spreading again, um, you know, in that environment. Uh, but yeah, it's if 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 it is more of a band-aid solution, like let's say that you've got an environment that you're just trying to manage and maintain. It may last a year. It may last two years. You know, it may last six months. It's really, it just all depends on how aggressive, you know, how much water, how much is coming back. But when you, when you do it the way that we recommend, which is to do these things in sequence, right? Mm -hmm. Fix the building issue, remove the mold, remove the mycotoxins. Um, you, you shouldn't have the problem again. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I think that was good and clear for folks to hear that. Cause I think for a lot of people, you know, we, 
we have the options of calling different mold remediation companies, but they're not taking care of the mycotoxins. And that's the really important thing that I wanted folks to get out of this is that we could just feel as crappy as we did before, um, unfortunately. Or worse. <laughs> yeah. Or worse, like you explained. And and that's the key here. And, and you know, I think the biggest thing to think about, too, is a lot of people are like, do I have to move, you know? And and this is a way to save being in your home, apartment, et cetera, wherever you're living and be able to to not have to. Yeah, and save your belongings, too. You know, a lot of people, I've met so many people, right when they come to us, they're like, oh, we've got the mold. We threw away everything we own. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I wish I would have met you a couple of weeks ago. But that's what people you know, had to do. And, mm -hmm. and that is really, I'm, I'm glad that you bring that up. You know, a, a lot of what we tell our customers is like, we understand, like, you're not alone. It's okay. Like they just, be, they're so overwhelmed and there's so much out there or there's nothing out there or everything's different. You know, the, what I like to just tell people, some, the first thing I tell them is just like, we'll get it done. Right. Even if you don't know exactly we haven't gotten, you know, there's a couple other questions or things we have to figure out. You know, we're getting to the point where we understand building related illness and its causes and how it relates to these issues within the building. And, uh, you know, I, you can't sugarcoat it. For some people, it can be expensive. For some people, it you know, it can be stressful, right? But before, there were many people who got into situations where there, you if you can't get the mycotoxins out, there's some people that cannot live in uh, that home. And in that case, you have to move. Um, and that's not the case anymore, right? We've got a solution for those toxins. So um, it's, it's still early. You know, we're the only company that's doing this right now. Um, so it's still early and and it you can get into some difficult situations, but everyone in our company has been through this personally, right? This is what we deal with every day. Um, and it's we're, we're passionate about that. We're passionate, not just about yet yeah, use our products, but we're passionate about education. And we're also passionate about supporting people through the process. You know, they're not feeling alone. And we've got a lot of things that we're going to be doing in the future around building communities, support communities. It's the thing I hear the most often from people. They just said, Oh my gosh, just talking to you makes me feel like I'm not crazy because I'm, I'm getting validation from all these that I've felt in my body or I've felt in a relationship or I've known, you know, somehow intuitively, but I just didn't have the words or the awareness. Um, so it's all about that. It's, it's, it's about creating that solution for people, you know, giving them hope in, in this situation. Some of the most hopeless, oh, just the most tragic, hopeless stories. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I'm it, having seen uh, quite a few of my patients go through this. I mean, it is awful. It is awful. And and so, yes, absolutely excited to be able to share this podcast with folks and, and just educate more on that there are solutions. And uh, you guys definitely have a unique one since you said you're the only one out there. Now, let's tell folks where they can find you, how they can consult, how they can use the chat bot to figure out what they need and, and all of the above. Absolutely. So I would say for people who have had mold remediation, um, or who are dealing with a mycotoxin issue, you know, lingering illnesses or the suspicion of that in their home, uh, superstratum.co, and I'll put that link in, uh, in the description. Um, that's the mycotoxin solution. So they can go to superstratum.co. They can go, you know, contact us if they want to talk directly to somebody or go to our chat bot. Um, and that will provide them some information, answer some basic questions, and then direct them to the place where if they want to get a quote, for our whole home system, for all of those products to, to do that um, process, then they can create that quote right there and talk to an agent. Um, so it's it's custom, right? We want to help build the right solution for that customer uh, for mycotoxins. If um, someone's dealing with some, you know, more a mold issue, or they're dealing with, uh, you know, a building science issue. EMF, you know, the, there, there are other building related illness issues, you know, that we haven't talked about that really kind of aggravate the microbial things. Um, they can go to hygia.life. So that's our service arm. Um, and we've got a, a great team, um, great team of women there actually, who are experts in building science and, um, you know, mold remediation and those types of things. And we, we serve the middle Tennessee area primarily with HVAC cleaning, mold remediation, mycotoxin cleaning, you know, all the professional services needed to 
rehabilitate a, a you know a sick building. Um, but we also provide nationwide consultation, and we do do nationwide mycotoxin cleaning um, because there are a lot of people, maybe elderly people or people who have very large houses, who are like, oh, I I want this done in my house, but I can't you know, handle doing that work. Um, so we have professional teams that can come in and it's about a two day process um, where, where they will run that system and do the cleaning. Uh, and so we do that nationwide as well. And they can, you can find that service at uh, hygia.life. Um, and then I think f for the, the chaos air filter, there's, I think it's chaos.air or chaosair.com. And that's K H A O S air.com. Um, and that's a pretty, it's a smaller company that I think makes those filters, but that you can, you can do more research there and, and find those, those air purifiers that I was talking about, the multi-cluster ionization. Very cool. Seth, you are a wealth of information and yes, no doubt EMFs are part of it. There's, I mean, there's a lot more we could talk about here for sure. We probably have to get you back and, and mm -hmm. chat further on those things. But for now, we'll leave folks with figuring out what's going on with the mold and mycotoxins in their home and check out Hygieia. It's hygia li dot life. Yes. Hygia dot life. Yep. yep. And and superstratum.co. So guys, check those out. I'll have them in my podcast notes at drjcrossnd.com. Seth, thanks again for coming on and sharing all of this information. Incredible stuff. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.